inputs in java so in the previous classes we have learned what is variable now we will learn what is initialization initialization is the concept of and assigning some values to an object or variable there are two types of initialization one is static another one is dynamic so assigning a constant variable which does not get changed throughout the entire run run time of a program it is called static initialization for example i have written in the first example int a equals to 5 always remember that the first value that is the at the the value which you are assigning which is at the right get stored into the left one that is the variable in the second example we have taken a data type of string so a string str equals to student which means that str is of data type string so string str equals to student so basically the student word which which is of string is getting stored inside the variable str so it is going from right to left now dynamic initialization assigning a value given by some output from a method or from input from the user during program execution basically what is happening is that the value the value inside the variable it's getting calculated at the run time of the program or maybe the value might be asked from the user as a input during the execution of the program where this happens is that where the variables value is not fixed anywhere gets dynamically asked during the execution of the program this is called dynamic initialization in the in the first example i have written double n equals to 5.5 in the second line i have written double sqr equals to n multiplied by n so the value of sqr depends upon the value which is stored inside the n so when n i have written n multiplied by n so the value of 5.5 multiplied by 5.5 is getting stored inside sqr now during the execution of the program suppose i change the value of 5.5 by 6.5 so you are seeing that the value gets dynamically changed inside the sqr because it is depending upon another value variable which is holding um, a different value in the second example i have written int num equals to sc dot next int here i am utilizing a method declared inside the scanner class this scanner class is very important in the upcoming videos and upcoming programming related tasks we will use this scanner class more and more to accept data like integer float double character boolean and string as well so here i have written sc dot next int always remember the value of execution always goes from right the right one first gets executed and then it gets stored inside the variable num 
So SC dot next int, what does it mean? A scanner class SC which you are seeing is an object of scanner class. So we are utilizing the object SC then followed by the dot operator. Since we have already started dot operator in the previous class, we already know that what is the utilization of dot operator. Basically, we are getting inside the scanner class and utilizing the next int function. The next int function allows us to accept integer related values. All integer compatible inputs can be accepted. So sc.nextint, this thing will get first executed. It will ask the user from the console to enter some value. After entering the sum value during the program runtime, this num variable gets initialized as the value gets stored inside the num. Now in the first program, we are seeing the writer program to accept numbers from the user and display summation of them. So let us see the code. I have already written the code. So I have written, I have declared, I have created a new class called accept and pressed OK. So this has generated a new class in front of me. Inside that I have written some code. So let us analyze this program. So I have written import java.util.star. This line is very important. Basically, this, this is a library. Util is a library. So inside the util library, we are get using the scanner class. So I have written import java.util.star then followed by a semicolon. Very important statement, without this we can, you cannot or anybody cannot use a scanner class. So I have written import java.util.star then semicolon then I have written the class accept then bracket then I have written public static void main. So this is the main method which I have written. After that I open a curly braces inside that I have written scanner sc equals new scanner system dot in just write down this line you don't have to basically understand everything what is happening inside this line i will just give you a gist that scanner is a class sc is an object n is an initialize n new is initializing this scanner class with the constructor system dot in Now, in the next line I have written system.out.println enter the first number. So I am accepting, so I am telling the user that enter the first number. So when this statement will be executed, enter the first number, a, 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 a cursor will blink just below it. The, the blinking cursor indicates that this line is getting executed. So sc.nextint when it will it when it will be executed, it will ask the type to enter some give to give some enter of some value and send it to the program. So basically we are accepting some value and we are storing inside the variable a which is our data type int. Always remember next int is always applicable to a uh, integer type. Next, I have written system.out.println enter the second number. Again, it is doing the first same thing as the first one. Enter the second number, it will show up in the console. And then again, a cursor will blink. The blink cursor again indicates that sc.nextint has been executed. So sc.nextint is asking some values. The value is getting stored inside the variable b. Always remember, that right to left precedence always happens since we have learned in the operator 
precedence and associativity. So equals sc dot next tint. So again, since everything, always remember whenever the equal to symbol is given, the right side of the equal to symbol gets executed first. So sc dot next tint just asking some value from the console and getting stored inside the variable b after accepting this value. So always remember right to left. Now int sum equals to a plus b. So I have here I have written int sum equals to a plus b. So a plus b indicates that since it is a simple expression, why it is a simple or, or a pure expression? Because sum a and b, these three variables are of type integer. That is why they are a simple expression. Now, this is also a dynamic initialization happening. These are the, here dynamic initialization happening. Here dynamic initialization is happening. Again, dynamic initialization is happening over here. So I've written in sum equals to a plus b. So suppose I have given 10. I have, in the in the next one I have given 20. So 10 plus 20 is 30. 30 is getting stored inside the sum. So 10 plus 20. So always remember the right hand side value 10 plus 20 is happening first. Then it is getting stored inside the variable sum. Then I have written system dot the print the summation of two numbers is sum. So I have, so I have, so the, in this the next line a, a thing called concatenation is happening. This variable is getting converted into string and is getting summed up to the next to the near one string. The summation of the two numbers is a string which is since it is inside double quotes plus sum. So we are concatenating two strings and we will see an output of suppose you have given 10 and here, here 20. So 10 plus 2, 20, 30. So summation of two numbers is 30. So let us compile. So here you are seeing this class compile, no syntax error is showing. So it is working. Now we will right click on that, click on void main and it will show, it is asking the first number. So type the number given below, type input and press enter to send them to the program. So I have written 10 in the second, in, enter the second number. So I suppose I have given 20. So as expected, the summation of two numbers is 30. Now homework. So this program has to be done using scanner class. Write a program to accept numbers from the users and display them. So you have to perform addition, subtraction, multiplication and division with the two given variables. Hopefully you, will, you have written all the notes given in the video. Please continue to do this for the rest of the videos as I will give more and more handwritten notes 